Hello everyone and welcome back to designing a website in Figma. In today's video we're going to be finalizing the article detail page that we have started working on in the previous episode. We are going to add a quote component and also add related articles at the bottom of our page. Let's get started. So here I have the hand-drawn sketch that I have been using as a guide for assembling and designing this page. And as you can see uh, when you compare these two layouts you can notice that they are almost identical except for these two parts, which is the quote component and then related articles. So let me fix that. Let me also press Shift G to turn on the layout grid. This will reveal the 12 columns that we are using. And I am going to use three or four articles from the article listing component. And I think I could select like the first four and then duplicate them and put them right here. I'm not sure yet if we're gonna use four or three of those, uh, but what I know is that they're gonna go right here, which means we have to make this page taller, right? So that it fits in here. So let me select this frame and the article detail page and then make it taller, move that the very bottom we're gonna adjust the precise height uh, later so you don't have to worry about that um, so the next thing I'm going to do is use my text tool and type in related article right so related articles and this is going to be h2 right so this is h1 the article name is h1 and this is going to be h2 because that's the second most important headline on the page if that turns out to be too big, we are going to change that. But in any case, let me select these four articles and then press Shift A to add an auto layout around them and then rename this auto layout to articles container. So that's articles container. And then all of these, this auto layout is going to be wrapped inside another auto layout so that it's kind of centered on the page. So let me let me press Shift A again with this auto layout selected, which is going to create another auto layout on top of our auto layout. I'm going to remove the padding and then I'm going to rename this to related articles section, right? So that's going to be the related articles section. And I need to make sure that two things are set up. The first one is the contents of the related articles section is set to center, right? So now that we change the size, the container of these articles is going to stay in the middle, right? So we want to make sure that the related articles section is set to center alignment within the auto layout settings. And then the second thing, make sure that the articles container has the spacing set to 24. Why? Because the spacing between individual columns in our, on our website is always 24. So you want to make sure you match that. At the same time, we are using uh, the width for each individual article. As you can see, that's 270 pixels because um, the width is set to fixed width, basically. And 270 pixels is very intentional because that's the width of these three columns plus the two spaces between them, right? So let me show you what I mean. What I mean is that when you make something 270 pixels wide, it spans exactly three columns and two spaces. So that's the reason why we are using the fixed width on the individual articles, but then hack content on the articles container. So just so you know what's the logic behind this. Um, okay, so I'm going to take this headline that I have created and put that inside the related articles section. So paste, right? And this is what happens. I think we definitely need to move this to the top. So let me press with this headline still selected. Let me press command left bracket. And then I think we could go for fill container, right? Also, I think we could do one thing. The first one is center the text so that it's on the center. But if we, for example, want to set this headline to be left aligned or right aligned, you want to make sure that the headline aligns, the left edge basically aligns with these articles, right? But that doesn't happen if you kind of switch these text alignment. In order to do that, we would have to set the text width to 1152. So let me do that. And now you can see that if we want to experiment with left alignment, uh, right alignment and center alignment, we can do so easily and uh, it 
kind of makes sense visually, right? So that's just a tiny adjustment. Let's try and see what works as usual, right? So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a padding both on the top and the bottom of this. So let me go to auto layout over here and then 96 on the vertical padding. This creates a little bit of space on the top and the bottom. And then I'm gonna paste that right here, right? So let me do this, yep. And as you can see, if we now paste all these articles on the white background, you can't really differentiate the object apart from the background, right? I don't think that's very good. So I think I'm gonna try and use the gray color that we used right here as the background for this section. So with this section still selected, let me press I. That stands for eyedropper and sample the color from right here, yeah? I think that's better, right? As you can see, we can now more easily differentiate uh, what, what are the objects that are, that are placed on the background. And also when it comes to spacing, I'm going to set the spacing to 44, let's say, or maybe 32. We want to use probably multiples of eight. So 40 maybe, yeah, 40, let's use 40. Okay, so that's one thing. Then let me also make sure that all of this is set within an auto layout, right? So uh, if we add something or if we rearrange stuff, um, especially now when we are going to be adding a quote, we want to make sure that the height of everything, the position adjusts accordingly. I think I'm going to select this article container and then press Shift A to add another auto layout on top of this auto layout. Then I'm going to make sure it goes all the way to the edges and then also that it's centered, right? So that the article stays in the center. Then what I'm going to do is select, is first of all, rename this to article section or just content section, let's say, content section. And then I'm going to select both of these, related article section and content section, and press Shift A to create another auto layout. I'm going to set this auto layout to zero, press enter, uh, the auto layout spacing, sorry, uh, this thing to zero, then I'm gonna press enter to get to the individual components of this auto layout and go for fill container, right? And now I'm going to adjust the total width of this auto layout and rename this auto layout to page contents or something like master auto layout or just main auto layout, right? Basically something that says, and you don't have to name your layers, by the way, it's just me wanting to kind of be easily able to tell what was my actual intention when designing stuff. So, but that's not really that necessary. I'm going to add a bottom padding for this content section of 96. And also I'm gonna remove the padding from all the other sides, right? So it's basically, it goes like 0, 0, 0, 96. The reason I'm doing this is now, if we, if we now do this, like add something, you know, the overall arrangement of things is upheld and then everything is moved and adjusted automatically, right? I'm also gonna take this footer and then add that footer into this auto layout. We're just gonna press Command X, select the main auto layout and then press Command V. So now if we do anything within any of these components of the auto layout, you can see how it's adjusting, right? So that's, that's very nice and useful. And now the quote right the quote so first of all i think we should definitely keep using the article font so we will be using meriwether for the quote component i'm going to duplicate the text which means pressing command and clicking on the text directly and then i'm going to hold down alt or option key and click and drag to move it right here this is what i get i get text unsurprisingly i'm going to rewrite some kind of quote into this we're gonna showcase something interesting the interviewee or the article author has written or said. I'm going to break the link, I'm going to detach the text style, and then I'm gonna make sure this font is bigger than the rest of the article. Let's say 20. Why don't we try 20 and see what that looks like? Or, or maybe 24, okay? Uh, we will have to test what looks best. And then what I'm gonna do is copy this and set the text style of this because that's gonna be the name to tagline, right? So we are going to type in name, last name. Basically, we're gonna specify right here who set 
this quote, okay? And then under Meriwether Regular, I'm going to choose for Italy. And then I'm just going to take this and add a quotation mark, right? Just to, I think it's, it's nice to have something that anchors the eye, introduces the section and makes it completely clear that this is, this is a quote, right? I think actually I'm going to turn this into a shape. So Command Shift O so that we don't get uh, all the space around that, right? So Command Shift O, convert to outlines. We get just the vector, right? But you can't edit that anymore. Uh, if you have like the text, you can see that you can edit that. But when you convert a text to outlines, you can't edit that anymore. Okay, so let me select all of this, press Shift A, then press Enter and select these two text objects and go to horizontal resizing and select fill container, right? This weird thing happens, but we're gonna fix this by selecting this frame and changing the width, right? So it's basically responsive now, again, very familiar with this workflow if you have been watching um, these videos about web design, right? So I'm going to also adjust the spacing. Let's go for 20, maybe. Let's also change the color of this name and last name. By reducing the opacity, I think we could go for like 33. And then also I'm going to rename this auto layout to quote, right? So it's going to be quote. Um, I am going to add a fill, right? And this fill is probably going to be slightly darker than the rest of the article. We could again go for this light gray that we are using in the related articles section. And I am going to add padding, right? So padding of let's say 32, both on the top and the bottom to add some padding. And then I'm going to make this wider. Yeah, maybe also reduce the opacity of this quotation mark or actually let's keep it at 66. I don't know. Um, anyway, I am going to turn this into a component quote component and add some routing like 16 maybe and then let me add component properties so let me select the text directly again by pressing command and clicking go to content create component property and we are going to say quote text and then for the name we are going to again go to content apply text property create property this one is going to be name, right? So we have now when we use an instance of this quote component, we get quote text and quote name. Uh, if I remove something from here, it's reflected on the instance, right? If you're familiar with component properties, if you're not familiar with component properties, go and check out my channel. I think I did a video on that back in 2022 when this update actually came out from Figma. So if you're confused by what I just did and what that means, go check out my video on component properties. So I'm going to take this quote instance, press command X, and then select this auto layout, uh, this article contents auto layout, and press command V. So now we get this beautiful quote right here that we are going to set to fill container so that it takes up the whole width of the article essentially. And yeah, I think I'm just gonna duplicate this text and put that below the quote, right? Can you see how helpful this now is when I add and remove stuff that everything is moving, right? That's the reason why we have done that. I'm going to, from the second text object, I'm gonna remove the first two paragraphs. And then from the first text object, I'm gonna remove the last two paragraphs so that we basically put the quote in between the text, right? So that it's not at the beginning or end of this article, just so that it's somewhere in the middle. And now let me actually do one thing. Uh, I'm going to, because we are building a prototype after all, a website prototype, let me actually think of a way that we can get to this article. Um, to match these images, I think we could link this article, if I click through all of that, this first article, when I select that and go to prototype, I am going to connect this article to the article detail page. On click, navigate to article detail and instant. It is going to be instant, right? So now when I click on this object right here on our blog, I will be able to get to the article detail page and then one thing I'm going to also do is select this go back button and I'm going to add an interaction 
And now it's not going to be probably what you expect. I'm going to open this interaction detail and on click, I am to, going to specify that we are going to go back, right? So whichever page you came from, when you click back, you're going to go back. So if we, for example, point to this page from a different page, when you now click on this uh, button right here, it's gonna always take you to the page that you came from, right? If that makes sense. So we are kind of future-proofing this interaction when we decide to point to this page from a different place on our website. And yeah, we have added the related articles, we have added a quote, and all that remains is now previewing this prototype so let me actually deselect everything and uh, select this and change the height, right? So that we don't get any space below the footer. And let me launch the prototype. So I'm going to launch the prototype and I end up on our homepage, right? We can scroll down, we can look at what we have created in the previous episodes of this series. I can scroll through quotes, read some frequently asked questions, and then I'm going to go all the way to the top menu, hover over resources, and then I'm going to click on blog. And now I get to our blog listing page where I can filter articles by categories. And when I go to all articles, hover over these individual articles that we have created in a couple of episodes back and I click on the first one, I get to the article detail page. And I'm going to scroll through this article. I can read a beautiful quote. And then when I'm done with my reading, I can also select from four related articles and maybe in the future we're going to create another page so that you can click from here. And then when I'm done, I am going to click back and I get back to the blog. So this is it. This is how you create a blog page in Figma. And yeah, that's it. We finalized the article detail page. And in the future episodes of designing a website in Figma, we're going to continue working on more pages. So if you'd like to learn more about web design in Figma, definitely subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for upcoming episodes. There is still plenty, plenty of stuff yet to be designed. Also check the playlist in the description where all these episodes are compiled. And thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.